that off, okay? So let's talk about these energy levels, okay? So we noted here for my psi function, right? Um, for the particle in the box, normalized, all right? You know, this is writing psi lowercase n, right? But just to remind you, if I wrote psi uppercase n, comma psi lowercase n, to me, the uppercase n tells me it's been normalized. The lowercase n tells me we're dealing now with this new quantum number thing, okay? So we note that energy goes up by the square, and you can see um, here are these values of n, right? When n is 1, it's just 8 squared over 8 ml squared. We call that energy level the zero-point energy, okay? Um, because, as it turns out, right, there's no temperature in this equation. So what that means is even at zero Kelvin, we would still have this zero point energy. So it's our ground state, okay? The ground state, all right? So when n becomes two, right, that goes up by the square. So right, it goes up to four. And then when n equals three, it goes up by nine. And then when it goes up to four, it goes up by 16, et cetera. It keeps going up by the square. Now, each, so each of these levels become our quantized energy levels. And this creates the basis of what we know about quantum mechanics, of energy only existing in these unique quantized read values, okay? This shaded area, right, that's kind of showing you this region between, those are the classically allowed energies. So in other words, if we just truly had a particle, like a little marble, right, rolling back and forth, okay, it could establish any value of energy along the scale. In other words, that value n uh, wouldn't exist, okay? It would have no value of n. However, because we established this using the Schrodinger equation, we got this quantized solution, quantized by this level n, all right? And so, of course, we can do some quick algebra to also calculate the difference between any um, one energy level, right? So if I put in en plus 1 minus en, okay, um, so now replace n with n plus 1 squared and just do some algebra, we get this factor 2n plus 1 times that quantity h squared 8ml squared, okay? And so this quantity 2n plus 1 is going to come up later on as well. Um, but this is allowing us to establish um, an easy way to calculate the difference between energy levels. And uh, so what I want to point out, a couple things. So here I'll write delta En equals 2N plus 1 times, uh, I wanted to write H bar, but that's just regular H, H squared over 8ML squared. So what happens as n goes to huge, huge quantum numbers, okay? Well, we established classically, if n goes to humongous quantum numbers, okay? This is approaching that of a classical system, all right? And so as n goes to these humongous quantum numbers, you know, it's two times n plus one, well, that plus one no longer matters. Okay, so it's not as significant. So now, on the other hand, what if we made the size of the box really big? So this is another thing we could do. We could keep the value of n fixed, so we keep it on the same quantum number. But what happens if we really stretch out the box, if we make the box bigger? Okay, so I can do that over here. Let's go back to the n is equal to 1 example. And now on my um, manipulate here, this L, I can make this L bigger. And I fixed the scale on this thing, so you just kind of have to watch this carefully. But now, as I'm making the box bigger, look what's happening. The wavelength is getting bigger, okay? So as, I, as the size of our box gets bigger, the wavelength gets bigger. So what does that mean for quantum mechanics or classical mechanics? Well, there's some really cool things that I'm gonna show you um, at the conclusion of some of these slides that there are physical colorimetric observations we can make. So as the box is getting bigger, 
our wavelength is getting bigger, meaning our energy delta E, the difference between energy levels, is getting smaller. And so what you actually see in real, in real life, in practical terms, as the particle in the box gets bigger, its spectrum will redshift. As the particle of the box gets smaller, its spectrum will blue shift, right? A bigger box means a bigger wave, which means a more red color. A smaller box means a smaller wave, which means a more blue color. And we can actually observe that in spectroscopy, which is very cool, okay? But if let's say the length of this box, if we, you know, we got it so big to the point where we're not talking about the size of an atom, but we're talking about like, making the box the size of a room, right? Let's say we do particle in a box, but now my box is this gigantic room-sized box. Well, the delta E would become so small that our energy levels would blend together and it would look like classical mechanics. So once again, we would get the correspondence principle, okay? So there are huge differences when we talk about putting an electron in a box where the box is the size of an atom versus if we put an electron in a box and the box is the size of a room, okay? The bigger that box gets, the more it approaches just a classical mechanics picture. Um, okay, folks, that was a little long. Apologies for that. Um, I'll see you in the next one.